Hallelujah. Are you convinced? That all the things looking for you have no power to bury you before your time? Say in death often. Danger of robbers. Danger of this. Ship crashed three times. I came out. Plane crashed many times. I came out. Say the devil was just looking for me for nothing. He couldn't catch me. See me now, Paul the aged. <laughs> hey! Hey! Look at the neighbor say, I don't care what is looking for you. They will never find you. You will fulfill your days. Look at someone say, I don't care the danger looking for you. They are wasting their time. You will fulfill your days. Give the Lord the praise and take your seat. This is enough to settle you. So you had another accident again. Say, that devil is a bastard. Say, I'm for his information. I won't have another one. I'll fulfill my days. Paul the was our first example. Our second example is Daniel. Daniel was the man that was that had the conspiracy of both people and systems against his life. What was he, his offense? He succeeded. Daniel chapter 6. Read verse 1 to verse last. How shall we find occasion against this Daniel? He was perfect, blameless. Beloved brothers and sisters, if you don't want people to conspire against you, and you don't want the devil to conspire against you, don't succeed. Somebody say, no way. Don't excel. Don't have a bright future. For some of us, what they are fighting is not where you are now. But what they perceive you are about to become. <laughs> so they want you dead before you reach there like Joseph. They say let us kill him. Let's see how his dreams will come to pass. But in the name that is above every name. You shall reach there. You shall reach there. You shall reach there. They put Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel the lionized the lion. Lion lost lionic capacity. While he was there. You can de you can de dangerize danger. You can defireize fire. Take your seat. And he came out. And when they put normal human beings there, the lion recovered. So what happened to me yesterday? <laughs> I'm sure they must have answered him. <laughs> you got somebody that was more powerful than you. My dear brothers and sisters, not everybody is wasteable by the devil. Not everybody is devourable. In gathering they shall gather, but not by me, say the Lord. As many as gather together against you, they shall scatter. It doesn't matter how close they are to success, they will never succeed. Against your life and your destiny. It's a simple case. God stopped them from throwing me into the lion's den. Yet they threw you. There is a miracle waiting in the lion's den. God, stop them from sending me into the fire. Yet you enter the fire. It means there is a miracle waiting in the fire. Take your seat. Our major objective tonight is to confirm, authenticate, verify 
The deliverance capability of the God we serve. Because the liar devil wants to make people to believe that every human life is at, is at the mercy of the, of the earth. No. The ambassador of America in Cuba is not subject to the economy of Cuba. The ab American ambassador in Nigeria is not aware of what is going on here. It's the economy of his country that determines his welfare. The Bible says we are ambassadors for Christ. We are heavenly matic ambassadors. We are here on a mission. We are not meant to be arrested and frustrated and and emasculated by the conditions of the land. Am I communicating? I'd like to show you a couple of testimonies that we, we saw in the deliverance capacity of God. A young man came here and testified some Sundays back. Benjamin is his name, Emmanuel, he's in the high institution. He said, I got entangled with members of a campus cult unknowingly. I was not actually born again, so I mistakenly befriended a lady who was a girlfriend to a dreaded campus cultist. When the cultist heard that I was going out with his girlfriend, he threatened to kill me if I failed to report to his house on the date he fixed for me. I was actually afraid, so I decided to look for a pastor. Fear catch him. Girlfriend defined. That, so after he decided to look for a pastor to pray for him, fortunately it was a dunamis pastor he met. So after he prayed for him, he led him to Christ. He surrendered his life to God. He later told him, the pastor told him to stay back and reject their invitation. So I stayed back and attended the church on a Sunday and still went out for the altar call. After the pastor prayed for me, he released me to go. Immediately the cultists saw me. They stopped the bike that carried me and began to attack me with bottles. But it was as if a hand blocked the bottles. They are about to hit him and then they hit something. Uh -uh. It was no pain, no injury. So they said he was using charm. When he eventually got to his house, alright, so they, they, then they followed him. When they event, eventually got to his house, the man fell in love with him and confessed that he was actually ready to kill him. If he reported the day he asked him to come to his house. He further told him that he had forgiven him because he could not understand why in his case he chose to love him instead. His friends insisted he must kill him. So they started making trouble but the power of God quelled them. He said today I'm, I'm, I'm here to testify that I am alive by the power of the word. There shall be no loss. I give God the glory. Every weapon looking for you shall jam fire. It, they shall jam rock. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout power. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. A, a man testified, brother John, Mr. John Wosu from Onisha. In Abuja here, but he stays in Onisha. Went to Onisha where his family stays to give his children money. One child is reading pharmacy, the other one I think medicine or so. And he, he went, the daughter was studying medicine, the son was studying pharmacy. On one fateful day, the son, the one studying pharmacy, was going to the market to buy provisions to go back to school. He was accosted by some men. Who told him? They told him, we are looking for the house of Mr. John Wosu. That's his father. That happened to be him. So he took... They told him, he told them, they told him the correct house address. We're looking for, can you imagine somebody met you and said, I, he's looking for your father and then told you the house address. So he was convinced they knew him. Entered their car and they covered him with a, a handkerchief. Immediately he passed out. 
They took him to a thick forest outside the state. They waited for him. From, the, the man said they waited for his son from 10 a.m. in the morning till 8 p.m. in the evening. But he was nowhere to be found. He began to declare the prophecy from the altar by the senior pastor, Dr. Enencho, that says, there shall be no loss. He said, I declare it more than 10,000 times that night. And I said, my father in the Lord said, there shall be no loss. Wherever they are tying him, they must lose him. Nobody can use my son for rituals. He said, my son said that, that at midnight, he woke up and saw himself tied to a table, about to be sacrificed with a knife. The person took his hand to cut him and the hand suspended in the air and started vibrating. Are you just sitting and looking like that? Hey! Look at somebody by yourself and say, there is God. Say it in our vernacular here. Go day. Hey! The man tried again. His hand was still suspended and vibrating in the air. He said to his fellow ritualists, we cannot use this boy for sacrifice. You want to hear what happened? The ritualist used the boy's phone to call his father. And this is the summary. Your son is with us. Summary. Carried him in their vehicle. And dropped him at river at Niger River Bridge. And turned and left. Ritualist refunded person. Yes, <laughs> hey! Hey! Are you just looking like that? I am here to announce to you. No agent of the devil shall be able to use your blood. They shall not be able to use your life. All that of your children, your brother, your mother, your loved ones, your sisters, in the name of Jesus. Look at somebody by and say, God preserves. Say the power of God is real. Take your seat. If this does not convince you, pharmacy student, five years of investment in the university, gone like that, that devil is a bastard. A brother in Pape, I'm sure you heard the testimony during the last convention. Spirit of death in their family, suddenly, it was during the last November convention. Fell down, died. They brought his body to the church at Mpape Dunamis Church Branch. The pastor was here testifying. While the service was going on, there shall be no loss. The declaration was going on. The pastor was on the altar. The, the pastor was praying for him and here we are declaring and they were connected live. He jerked back to life. But this was his story. He said he found himself in a very thick forest. You remember the story? And he saw this pastor. Drove with a wine colored infinity jeep. And arrived and said, What are you doing here? Do you know where you are? It's a dangerous place. Enter the car. The moment he stepped and entered the car, his eye opened on the altar. And there is such a car. There is such a car. There is. Any devil who tells you God does not deliver, tell him go to hell and tell your lies. 
any devil who tells you God does not preserve, tell that devil go to hell and tell your lies to those who would hear you. I am here this year. Your preservation is confirmed. Your deliverance is confirmed for you and your loved ones. Shout the loudest. Amen. Give the Lord a praise and take your seat. Pray for me. Let me use the few minutes to say as much as is needed to be said. What are our responsibilities for divine deliverance and preservation? Responsibilities. Number one, live in the fear of God. Live in the fear of God. The Bible said, according to Proverbs 19, verse 23, it said, The fear of the Lord tended to life. Anybody who has it shall abide satisfied. It cannot be visited with evil. We went in detail with this in the first service, and because of time, I will not be able to go through all of that. Number two, maintain spiritual sensitivity. Never allow yourself to be forced into a trip. That your spirit does not lead you to go. Maintain spiritual sensitivity. Anything you do that makes you lose your peace, cross check it again. Maintain spiritual sensitivity. Sensitivity is key to safety. Number three, avoid the fear of the enemy. Fear is a magnet of disaster. Job said, The things I feared came on me. What you fear comes on you. Don't allow the enemy to make you live in fear. Number four, watch your utterance. Life and death, or death and life, is in the power of the tongue. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Don't speak evil, don't speak guile. Now we're going to go to number, numbers five, six, seven, and eight which we'll do, deal with in the second service. Number five says, live in the secrets of God. Number six said, be watchful and prayerful. Number seven said, refuse to give up. And number eight said, maintain spiritual covering. So we are starting from number five. Live in the secrets of God. Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. What do I mean? Hide yourself inside divine secrets. Hide your life in insight. Let insight cover you. Hide yourself in scriptural revelation. In the same Psalm 91, he said, His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Truth is word. John 17, 17. Hide yourself in the truth of word. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Hide your life inside light. Darkness loses power in the face of light. The forces of darkness can, can never access a lighted man.
He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. Hear this. The secrets you access determines the shade you enjoy. There are people that are shaded from many things that others suffer. It's a matter of secrets. The secrets you access determine, determines the shade you enjoy. Job, in Job 29 verse 4, he said, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. That was the secret of the life of Job. He was enjoying divine prosperity and preservation by secrets. Hello? Let me say it like this. If you access the secrets, for example, of prosperity from this book, it shades you from poverty. The secrets you access determines the shade you enjoy. If you access the secrets of divine protection, it will shade you from satanic destruction. Shade. So there are things you see in the Bible from the world that flood your life like light. And when you are coming from afar, darkness sees light walking. They give you chance. Which is looking for who to kill. When they see you coming, they see light. Did you hear what I just said? So become a hunter of divine secrets. So your life can be shaded from premature wastage. Sila. Anywhere you see a man shaded or shielded from what others are suffering, he has connected secrets that others haven't seen. Hide your life inside secrets of scripture. Hide your life. In the whole of his hands. In the whole of his hands. I am seen whatever may be taught me. In the whole of his hands. In the whole of, in the whole of his hands, of his hands, in the whole of his hands, of his hands, I am saved, whatever may be, in the whole of his hands. In the whole of his hands, of his hands, in the whole of his hands, in the whole of his hands, I am saved, whatever may be, I'm in the whole of Whenever the devil is looking for you, let him jam light. Whenever the devil is looking for you, let him jam mystery. Let him jam some secrets. Let him be convinced that this man is impenetrable. 
Am I communicating? Look for a scripture. Look for scriptures that bid you from being wasted anyhow. Look for them. Let them sit in you and you sit in them. <laughs> Number six, be watchful and prayerful. Luke 21 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be what? Count, accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Watchfulness and prayerfulness are the doorways of escape from the snares of the enemy. Watchfulness and prayerfulness. Watch and pray that you may escape. So to fail to watch and pray is to be trapped. What is God saying to us? You want divine preservation and deliverance? Be awake. Be alert. Be aware. In the spirit. Awakeness, alertness, awareness. In the spirit. Avoid spiritual slothfulness and slumbering. The enemy is at work when men are at sleep. Matthew 13, 25. When men slept, his enemy so tears. And it's not just physical sleep. When you, when you are spiritually slumbering, prayer altar is dead. It sets the space for the enemy. Can I say this to you? Nobody can look after you like you. Don't hand over your destiny to other people. No matter how prayerful a person is, your prayer for yourself is critical. Thank God for your pastor. Thank God for the for, for intercessors. But nobody can look after you like you. Nobody loves you more than you love yourself. Nobody. Take your seat. To fail to take responsibility for your life is to end as a liability. Just refuse to give up. Refuse to give up on God. Refuse to give up on life. Refuse to give up on yourself. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 13. He said, A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the spirit. Another translation says, By sadness of heart. Easy to read version. The New American Standard Bible. By the sadness of the heart, the spirit is broken. By the sadness of the spirit, another translation says the spirit is crushed. The spirit is crushed. Do you know what it means? For your spirit to be crushed. That is the main defense of your life. The Bible said the spirit of man, Proverbs 18, 14, will sustain his infirmity. That is, any confrontation of life you have, it is your spirit that wards them off. You say, but a broken, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? A wounded spirit, what is his future? Everything that makes your countenance sad, weakens your spirit. The sadness of the countenance is the weakness of the spirit. And the weakness of the spirit is the defeat of life and destiny. You ain't saying nothing. 
Is this, is this speaking to somebody at all? That is why depression is the foundation for oppression. Because the spirit is weakened. In the atmosphere of depression, you don't need to beg bad dreams to come. That is, depression is the doorway to disaster. Depression invites destruction. Death can be instant with depression. There are people who have been depressed to death. There are people who have been depressed until ordinary malaria killed them. I'm talking from experience of what I have witnessed. Ordinary typhoid. Somebody told me one day, say, if you see God, ask him, does he know I exist? Is he aware that I am on earth? Somebody said that. I don't want to tell you the rest of the story. Depressed. Until you reject depression, you have not rejected destruction. At what point do people take their lives? Extreme depression. Ahitophel killed himself because his counsel was not taken. Judas Iscariot killed himself. Refused to give up. It looks to me like the demon of death is following people who are downcast. Just following them to give any slight opportunity. They will never find you. Amen. Lift up your right and say in the name of Jesus. Amen. I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. Never lose hope. Because until hope is alive, faith is never in place. Hebrews 11.1 1. You cannot be faith-filled if you are hopeless. Until hope is alive, faith is never in place. And if faith is not in place, life is in danger. Because the just shall live by his faith. If your hope is not alive, help is not on the way. See, I will look up to the hills from whence come in my help. Those who are depressed don't look up, they look down. I said, I, I, I said, I, I said something in the first service. There was a woman by name Carrie Fisher, an American Nollywood, uh, Hollywood. Um, artist at the age of 60 she was flying from London, England to America on the 27th of December just last week she had a mass, ha massive heart attack in the aircraft and died on the 27th she landed though but died on the 27th her mother was still alive 84 years Debbie Reynolds also of the same industry, but a music star there. The next day, her heart was so broken until she said, I want to join her. I miss her so much, I want to join her. Fifteen minutes after such a statement, she was dead. Am I communicating? As a growing up child, I experienced such a thing. In the neighborhood, a woman, middle age, she would be like around 60. Her daughter was a highly prolific woman that had like seven children for six men. And she supported the family from her multi paternal friends, the, 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 the income from multiple parents of her children and suddenly she died 
This middle-aged mother around 60 years old cried her heart out. She said, seven, day number seven is a date. Day number 14 is a date. Any of these two days, we must join each other. She gave herself two dates. 14 day on the dot, she slept and didn't wake up. Sickless, depressed to death. Death will never find you. That amen is to paralyze. Shout the loudest amen. Look at somebody by yourself and say, never play with depression. It does not pay you. It will be about hopeless. No. There is hope to him that is joined to the living. A living dog is better than a dead lion. A dog that is alive is better than a lion that has died. Eh? The dog is still alive. But the lion has died. At least he can still say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Take your seat. Hallelujah. Lift your right and say, I. I. Call your name. I refuse, I refuse. to give up. I won't give up on God. I won't give up on life. And I won't give up on myself. I will reach there in the name of Jesus. Is this making sense to anybody? Person is too depressed that small witchcraft arrow. Yeah. It will never be your portion. Yeah. Finally, number eight. Maintain spiritual covering. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, was he preserved. Your prophet has a role to play in your preservation. How many of you have ever had, had a testimonies in this church? Somebody says some people surrounded them. All of a sudden, the pastor arrived. That was the prophetic mantle. And attacked the people who wanted to kill the person. Several times. By a prophet. Was he preserved? When Saul wanted to kill a priest by the name of Beata, and he ran and went to David. David also had men with him, about 400 men, area boys. First Samuel chapter 22, verse 23. Anybody that was in debt, in distress, they were with David. Look at what he said. He said, Abide thou with me. Fear not. For he that seeketh my life, seeketh thy life. But with me, thou shalt be in safeguard. That is, I carry a prophetic cover and by the prophetic covering on my life you are preserved. God spoke something to Paul the Apostle. And I want us to look at it in Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27, and verse 24. Let me, stood, let, let, sorry, let me start from verse 22. He said, now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss. Somebody say, there shall be no loss. No. Louder. At the top of your voice. In your family. In your marriage. In your business. In your career. I exhort you. Be of good cheer. So we are saying there shall be no loss. This is where it is. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. But of the sheep. Now read further. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, 
whose I am and whom I serve. Saying, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. I have given you all that say. So far, we are in the same boat. No loss. No loss. Stand up on your feet. Huh? That's right. Stand up on your feet. He said, I have given you all that sail with thee. Whatever made them mistakenly enter the ship. Whatever made the lion to enter the ark of Noah, he has escaped the flood. Whatever made the tortoise to enter the ark, he escaped the ark. He escaped the flood. I have given you all that sail with you. You have the right to say, Lord, I am sailing with your servant. I am connected to this ship. I am connected to this train. I am connected. A man of God was inside the, an aircraft one day and when terrible turbulence was happening and everybody was afraid, the man was so calm and they asked him, they said, what happened? He said, he was just eyeing the man that if anything happened, he would just dive and hold his leg. That anywhere he goes, they will go together. There shall be no loss. So Paul, together with these people, there shall be no loss. So identify your prophetic covering. Listing for prophetic instructions and directions. Value your prophetic cover. Am I communicating? Beyond that, go in the same direction with your prophet. They were in the same ship, sailing in the same direction. Is there a vision that is a vision of the commission? Swim into it. If it has been said that God is commanding us as a commission to go out on evangelism this year, or to do this, or to do that, just dive into the vision. In order to maximally profit from the cover. Don't let the commission face a direction and you face another. He said, I have given you all that sail with you. Anybody sailing by themselves, they are on their own. I can only guarantee those who sail with you. Paul what I am guaranteed, I'm not saying those who identify with you. I'm not saying those who know you. I'm not saying those who came to you for prayer. <laughs> I am not talking of those who quote you. I am talking of those who sail with you. Where you face is where they faced. Where you are heading is where they are heading. They own the vision like yourself. If that is the case, there shall be no loss. Somebody say it louder, amen. Somebody say it louder, amen. You take steps in the steps of your prophet. When they share their testimonies and their stories of their practices with God, 
It is not for your entertainment. Uh, it, is, it is for your emulation. His examples are your principles. Am I communicating? So this is how I do with God. This is what I do. These are the steps I take. This is what I do in my resources with God. This is the kind of, You take their steps to benefit from their cover. That was how Elisha took the steps after Elijah. And they said the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. And of course, never go against the unction. Anywhere you find them criticizing men of God, you are not there. I mean men of God generally. Not to talk of your mentor or your prophet. Not to talk of you yourself in the forefront. You receive the back slap of that same anointing. For the Lord kill it and make it alive. Don't do it. Any church you can comfortably criticize and the pastor you can criticize. Run from there on time. Because the testimonies people will be sharing, you will be sharing the opposite. The Lord kill it and make it alive. Benefit from prophetic cover with deep respect and deep reverence. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say it louder, amen. amen. There is nobody who has been able to talk comfortably against my father in the Lord who has stayed near me. Who are you? Where were you when God called him? Why didn't you advise God at that time that he's not qualified, you are more qualified? God saw you with all your qualification and rejected you and anointed him. You should pity yourself for being so rejected. So opening your mouth and talking against people. Don't do that. And there are agents of the, people, of the devil looking for who to kill. So they will come to recruit you into rubbish talks. Don't join them. Am I communicating? There are jobless people who are permanently on the internet. They say, so, so, so. Ah, too, I comment. <laughs> permanently. Don't join them. No future. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say louder amen. amen. You are preserved. You will fulfill your days. The mantle of this commission will work in your favor. It will not work against you. Say that amen like a believer. Is somebody blessed here tonight or not? How many of you receive something here tonight? Give the Lord seven hallelujah shouts. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven congratulations any of the points I mentioned anywhere you failed before God is such a merciful God Lord I am sorry I talked carelessly in time past Lord I am sorry Instead of following the burden of prayer, I played it off. Instead of following the burden to fast, I ate it up. Lord, I'm sorry, wherever it is. But before we go there, just lift your hands and appreciate God for the word you received tonight. Appreciate Him. Honor Him, adore Him. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands high up. And pray this prayer with me. And say father. Thank you for your word to me tonight. I give you the praise. And I give you the honor. In the name of Jesus. Tonight I come before you today. And I am asking. That you will help me. To accept the responsibility. For the preservation. Of my life. In your hands. I receive the grace to connect with my prophetic covering 
in the name of Jesus. The grace never to give up. In the name of Jesus. The grace to be watchful and be prayerful. I receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace to access the secrets of God and to live in the secrets of God. I receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace for correct utterance to speak the right words. I receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace to live above the fear of the enemy. I receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I receive the grace to maintain spiritual sensitivity. I receive that grace in the name of Jesus. And above all, the grace to live in the fear of God. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Lift your hands and your voice and begin to speak to God. The grace to live in the fear of God. The grace to live in the fear of God. The grace to live in the fear of God. The grace to live in the fear of God. I receive that grace. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name, lift up your hands everywhere you are. In the main sanctuary, the galleries, the overflows, I know there are many here. You heard that word today, touched your life so much, and you are saying to me, Pastor, 2017 is my year of divine proofs. I want God to prove himself in my life, but I want to live in the fear of God. I want the grace to fear him. Not to disobey him. Grace to live for God. Wherever you are, you will pray this prayer with me and say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I'm in need of your help. Come into my life, Jesus, and make me a new person. Today I have decided to follow you, Lord, and no turning back. Forward ever. Backward never. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. All those who pray that prayer, can I see your hand up? Oh my God. Wave your hand, let me see. That's right. Quickly come forward here. Just one moment. Everyone who prayed that prayer with the hand lifted, carry your Bibles, carry your bags, quickly rush to the front. From the gallery, also come to the front. From the overflows, everywhere you are, come to the front. I'll give you the count of seven while the song is on. Everyone who watched via, via the satellite or the internet, we are looking forward to, to also receiving from you that you made the decision tonight. Numbers are on the screen, email address are on the screen. Let us know you decided tonight. God bless you. Keep coming. One. The rest of us take your seat. upon that communion Exodus chapter 12 verse 12 and 13 if you have your communion please lift them up you say for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and in case all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment I am the law verse 13 and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are and when I see the blood I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land. I prophesy that this communion is your Passover communion. Yeah. Calamity, 
adversity, disaster, premature death, arrows of disease, witchcraft attack. From your father's house, from your neighborhood, wherever you are per time, as it comes near where you are, it shall pass over. As it comes upon your children, they shall pass over. You shall live and fulfill your days. 2017 shall not swallow you. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 11 As for thee By the blood of thy covenant I have set thee forth Sent forth thy prisoners Out of the pit wherein there is no water I speak today By the mystery of this communion Every prison Every captivity The enemy has kept you in time past Today the yoke is broken In 2017 The bondage is broken this is your communion of escape. And in Revelation 12, 13, 12, 11, we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. This year, you will never know defeat. By the power of the blood of Jesus, every battle, every warfare, every confrontation, hold against you by the enemy, you shall overcome. You shall overcome. You shall overcome. I call it done. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Say a louder amen. Take your seat and proceed in the communion. Those of you on your knees, place your right hand on your chest and lift the, the other hand up. And say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Deliver me from the power of sin. Today, I have decided to follow you, Jesus. No turning back. Forward ever. Backward never. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you today. I declare that hold of sin broken. And the grace to live for God is upon you. In Jesus' name. God bless you. The yoke is broken of your life. The grace to live for God is upon you. Pass the communion on quickly. 